Parasites are major contributors to poor animal health and welfare and can result in significant production losses. A better understanding of their biology is required if we are to control them effectively. Meet the worms. They all look very contented on pasture with their potential hosts around them. Although the worms might look very similar, they actually prefer different host animals. Some worms prefer horses, some prefer cows, while others prefer sheep. Once the infective larvae are ingested by the preferred host, they enter the gut where they mature and become adults. The adult worms mate and the females lay eggs, which are shed back onto the pasture in the faeces. The eggs hatch, the worms develop to the infective stage and wait to be ingested through grazing. This is the basic life cycle of parasitic worms. The young worms can survive quite happily on pasture for several months. There are many different types of parasitic worms that cause different problems such as diarrhoea, colic, weight loss and anemia. So, how can we control these worms and minimise the damage they do? Well, there are many anthelmintic products and formulations that you could use, but currently there are only five groups of active ingredients licensed for sheep and three for horses and cattle. But do they always work? Some of the worms are able to adapt and survive treatment and can pass this ability on to their offspring. This is known as anthelmintic resistance. The resistant worms carry mechanisms that allow them to survive. The resistant adult worms lay eggs, which once again are shed onto pasture in the faeces. The eggs hatch and develop to become resistant worms that will infect or reinfect animals and survive treatment repeatedly. It is important to remember that it is the worms that are resistant to the treatment, not the host animal. So, what is it that enables these worms to develop resistance? Every time you use an anthelmintic, the worms have an opportunity to select for resistance. The more treatments the animal receives of the same anthelmintic, the more chances the parasites have to develop resistance. However, resistant to each anthelmintic is developed separately. Worms resistant to one anthelmintic will not necessarily be resistant to all of them. Underdosing is another factor that promotes the selection of resistance. Don't forget that when you introduce new or returning animals to your premises, they may be carrying resistant worms, which will contaminate your pasture. However, there are ways to slow down the development of resistance, and this is how you could do it. The first step is to check whether animals require treatment or not. Secondly, if they do, check that the treatment has worked effectively. It is very easy to do. Animals can be gathered in the corner of a field and fresh faecal samples collected from the ground. Samples can be examined individually for horses or as a group for sheep and cattle. Large numbers of eggs seen under the microscope may mean that the animals need treating. Testing for the efficacy of an anthelmintic can be done as easily as looking at faecal samples 7 to 14 days after treatment. Any eggs seen 14 days after treatment is an indication that the drugs may not be working as well as they should be. If eggs are reported, then further examination would be required. Before you treat, you should make best use of all available information regarding your animals and consider your management options. Diagnostic information. Climatic conditions. Management. Before commencing treatment, you should consider all available management options. So, when you treat, be sure to treat the right animals with the right anthelminthic at the right dose for the right worm at the right time of the year. By following these approaches, you will slow down the development of anthelmintic resistance and prolong the efficacy of the current products. At Morden, we are researching options for the control of parasites. This includes the development of vaccines and prolonging the efficacy of treatments through sustainable control strategies. For more information, please ask your anthelmintic prescriber or visit our website.